Gig Gab, the Working Musicians Podcast, episode 141 for Monday, November 20th, 2017. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the podcast by four and about working musicians, weekend warriors, we like to call it. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Las Gatas, California, Paul Kent. How you doing, Mr. Kent? I'm doing pretty good, Mr. Hamilton. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Hanging in there. Yeah. Thanksgiving week this week. You got plans? Uh, we have the family coming over. Yeah. Oh, very nice. How many people? Uh, it'll be somewhere 11 or 12, depending on how it all settles in, I think. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. Well, how good. about you? Um, we're going to be guests this year. Um, we're guests about every third year and okay. we're going to go to my dad's, but uh, kind of a weird year. My daughter got married a couple weeks ago and she's going to stay in New York for this first Christmas. So, you know, that's kind of sad. And my two other daughters, one is actually her birthday that day. Happy birthday, Emma. Um, she may uh, go out with some friends and and uh, and take a little little her time. So it's just kind of a different year, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. life. Yeah. I um, I it, this is not a different year for us, except that I know it's the last of the you know one phase of of things in our lives and and then next year my daughter will be off to college probably yeah. home for thanksgiving but no guarantees there you know depending right. on where she goes and so it's it's like even just for the last couple of years it's been very palpable for all of us that that our our change fam- is coming that change is coming yes our family interaction as we know it uh, it, it is limited. It, it, I mean, not that we're going to stop talking to each other as a family. I don't think that'll ever happen, but, uh, but it's going to change. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I, and it's actually interesting because this week is, you know, <clears throat> with this kind of different type of Thanksgiving for us, I've been intensely introspective, you know, thinking about, thinking about a whole bunch of things, life, music, you know, my family and all these types of things. I'm actually in a decent sized funk right now. And it's most, most specifically about music, but I'm in a, I'm in a little bit of a funk. So I'm kind of glad that we're going to do our things to be thankful for. Maybe we'll write the ship right here on our show. <laughs> that works. That works. Yeah. yeah, man. All right. Well, do you want to start or would you like me to start? How about if we ping, ping pong back and forth here? Yeah. There, well, there, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You take the first one, man. All right. First thing I'm happy for, I'm thankful for. <laughs> new strings <laughs> <laughs> always make me happy. It's such an inexpensive thing to do. Changes the whole sound of your instrument. Everything sounds brighter, cleaner. It's just, uh, it's a little thing in life. Be thankful for the little things. New strings make me very, 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 very happy. So, silly, right? Uh, not at all. Silly. Uh, I have a couple things on my list that are about sound and happiness. So yeah, man, of course. <laughs> Um, yeah, in fact, in fact, I will, I will go, I will follow you in that order and I will go with my, uh, Ludwig back black beauty snare drum. That's relatively new to me. It's not new this year. I think it was last year I bought it, but, uh, maybe even two years ago, but it always takes me a little while to really like learn a, a drum, especially a snare drum or learn a cymbal and, and just like, you know, make it feel like home to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yep. And uh, and this year, for sure, that Black Beauty has become home for me. Uh, mm. And it sounds good. It feels good. I know exactly what it's going to do. I've I've really actually changed, expanded the way that I tune a snare drum, especially in terms of the way I tune the snares on it, um, it to get a kind of a a a, a fatter sound, uh, but a a a a better sound in smaller rooms. Anyway, it it has been. That drum has has really, for me, come into. I've come into my own with that drum this year. The drum hasn't changed. I mean, maybe it has, you know, because it's just yeah. getting a little older. But, um, but it's it's just me learning it and and becoming comfortable with it and and being willing to experiment with it and then finding kind of those those things that I like and don't like and and sort of tweaking that about it. So yeah, well, well that's definitely that's on my list. Cool. Yeah. Well, let me then add in. Let me layer in here that, um, we, and it's probably a fun thing to do. The brand of strings I've been using on my electric guitars are clear tone, 10 okay. to 52s, 
heavy bottoms because I play pretty aggressively and try to keep the low E in, in tune. And then, um, and then for acoustic, I've been using string joy, which is kind of a, you know, self indulgence. They're pretty expensive. Um, and, uh, I think they, they last a little longer and sound a little, you know, I, I really like an oaky sound to my, to my acoustic playing. And so those, at least I've convinced myself that for the extra money, I'm really getting something that I like and it sticks with me a little bit longer. So when you say they cost a little bit more, and I say this as a, you know, hack acoustic guitar player, I mean, I think I, I tend to go with, oh, what are the strings that everybody likes on an acoustic that I would have normally just picked up? I can't even Boomers think. Boomers or Daddario? Yeah, I think they're Daddario's. Um, anyway, I think I pay about 15, maybe 20 bucks for a set. How oh much? my gosh, that's a lot. I, maybe it's maybe it's less than that. I don't think so, though. I think that's about that's a what lot. I pay. Okay. Well, like cheap strings, bulk cheap strings, you're probably getting from four to six or seven bucks a set. Okay. And then and then the clear tones, they pay about thirteen bucks a set. Okay. Oh, and, so they're not that just, expensive. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But yeah I mean, yeah. again, you can string a guitar. You can buy guitar strings in bulk. Yeah. You know, for a lot less. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I buy elixirs. That's what they are. And they, oh, the, and those are the ones that last a little longer. They have you know, 13, the 13 bucks a set. So there you go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, you know, 13 bucks a set isn't a lot if you're buying them once every six months, if you're buying, you know, once a week or, you know, several times a month, that's when it starts to add up. It for sure. Oh yeah. 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 Well, but you can probably buy them in bulk, right? Um, some, some manufacturers, yes. Some manufacturers, no, I don't know about elixirs. Actually, I've never looked. Can you get, um, could you sign up for like an artist program with them? So, you know, I tried after we had that, uh, oh, yeah, with, Dan. that, that, with Dan East. Yeah. And, um, you know, I haven't gotten any, any takers yet, so I would love to have that. And I'm certainly would, would promote it well if it, if it did, but, um, yeah. clear tone, string joy, if you're out there listening, yeah um i like your stuff yeah right, um, i right. think it's really good stuff and and i play your stuff probably yeah, probably uh, yeah well anyway, you play it a question, anyway. about, a question about snare drum yeah yeah i do play i buy them anyway right because i like what they do for my sound right i have a question about snare drums go does a good snare drum sound good regardless of whether it's brushes or or sticks or can a good snare drum that you're playing on a regular rock set can it sound less good when it's not, when it's not a, a drum that you hit aggressively. Um, it, so the answer is the same drum could sound good with both brushes and sticks, but, but there's a huge asterisk there about head choice and tuning, right? So brushes, you can play brushes on any type of head, but the heads that sound best with brushes uh, by a long margin are coated heads. That you've seen them, they, they're kind of white uh, in color, but but they're it's a it's a coating that's over the the mylar of the head. Yeah, yep. So if you were to say be playing a clear head on a snare drum, or like some guys do, especially like uh, a lot of uh, like heavier metal drummers might use a clear head with a with a dot on it to really focus the sound, but also give the drum head some longevity and, and a little bit of extra beef, uh, th you know, uh, brushes are going to sound pretty awful on that head. But if you take that head off the drum and put on a coated head, uh, you know, you can, you can tune up any drum to sound decent with brushes. I think, I mean, there's some Do that are going to sound better brushes? than others. Do you yeah. play brushes in just about every gig? Um, I'm trying to uptown think. Uptown celebration? It, uh, in uptown, definitely. Uh, in fling gigs, I've got at least one tune that we play pretty regularly that I like to use brushes for ripple by, uh, by the dead, Ooh. um, for theater gigs, it, almost every gig, uh, I'll, I'll use brushes for something. So, yeah, I mean, I always have brushes with me. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not a, it, it's never a surprise to me to need brushes. So, so my drum, I've always used coated heads on my snares. Sometimes I'll use a coated head with a dot underneath. So it's not on top. It's not getting caught in the brushes, but it still provides some of that support and focus underneath the drum when you hit it harder. But, um, but yeah, 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 for sure. Cool. All right. Number two, number two, go. Oh, number two for me. Oh yeah. All yeah. right. Um, I am, uh, I'll, we'll stick with the gear thing. Uh, the ultimate ears, UE 11 pro ambience. They are the best sounding in ears I've ever used. And I've used so many of them over the years, but these, 
uh, and I, I'm guessing it's because of the, the additional driver and maybe the crossover in them, but whatever they've done with these things, it's remarkable for me. And it really, the biggest thing I noticed when I play gigs with these is, and even rehearsals with these is that both of them stay in more often than not. And, and that, that's a huge thing for me because the whole reason I started doing this, it's really nice to hear. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, the main reason that I started doing in ears years ago, uh, and earplugs before that is to protect my hearing. And obviously if one of them's out, I'm not protecting my hearing. So right. I've been very, very happy with the UE 11 pro ambience. I mean, like remark, I, I just didn't expect to be this happy and this comfortable with, with those right away. So, yeah. How much are they? Uh, I think they're uh, about, 1199, about right? a grand. Yeah. Maybe a little over. Yeah. 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 They're not inexpensive, but, um, but you know, they they're the best I've tried. And I've tried them from every brand that, that I could find West tone, um, uh, JH audio, who we had on the show. I actually used JH audio Layla's in the studio as reference monitors. I haven't tried their, um, their gigging ones yet. I've tried Sensophonics. I've tried future Sonics. I've tried, I don't know. I've tried all of them. And, uh, and these are like far and away the best I've ever used for gigging. Very cool. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah. Well, I'll go in a different direction here. The second thing that I'm thankful for, venues that respect musicians. Oh, yeah. So that's a big, broad, you know, banana of a term there. But, um, but uh, you know, there are venues in my area that um, the booking guy is a musician and he, he takes a good mu- musician-centric point of view on treating musicians. And, you know, what is, what is respect musicians can mean a whole lot of things. Just one that the staff is appreciative that you're there. That would be the foundational bottom line thing. Right. Yep. yep. But you know, when you get into like compensation and, uh, and, uh, you know, like if it includes a meal or a discount on a meal or drink tickets, these are, you know, kind of maybe obvious things to many, but they don't happen at all places. They, they really don't. Right. And, um, but mostly you can just tell a venue that, you know, the booking people, management ownership, they, they get it that it's a partnership, you know, that this person's going to come in and hopefully they're going to bring in some of their fans and you get to make some money off of it, but understand it's not a hundred percent on the musician to bring in people uh, and that you're in it together and that there's an appreciation for both. I certainly, as I'm saying here, I certainly appreciate a good venue in my area. You know, there's a good musician booking guy who books up a testosterone Testarossa winery. He's a musician. You know, he got, he actually got a gig saying I can bring you good musicians and, and he does, and he does a good job. Um, uh, Charlie at club Fox has been a long time booking guy and is a musician. Um, you know, there's a couple of bookie agents around here, Reed and, and Jimmy Douglas. Um, they just get the music musician perspective. They're not, they're not generic. Um, um, club owners, right? They're musicians who want to affect the quality of music coming out of their venue. And so again, you know, we play a lot of places, some places it's all business, some play, and that's fine. And some places it's, um, it's, they're not very good at business, but they love music and musicians and that's okay. You know, but it's probably not the best experience for playing somewhere, but the venues that have, they have a musician centric perspective to running their, their venue, you know, they promote well, they, um, you know, they just make you feel welcome in their place as though it's a partnership. It's a rare thing and it's tremendously appreciated. Those are the gigs that like, uh, you know, it's like going home, yep. it's going to see some friends. You just feel better about playing those gigs as opposed to the places where, you know, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a nice place, but they don't care. You know, like they I, don't I, care. I, that, yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, and there's places that are nice places and you know, the people who are there, you know, uh, are not owners or not managers. It's just staff. And, you know, they may mean well, but they've got other things to do. Yep. They say, go sit up in the corner and, you know, that type of thing. I try to avoid those types of places as, as we, you and I have spoken about, but, um, but yeah, I mean, right here and right now, I'm thinking about the good ones, the good guys, and just very appreciative. Those are really nice gigs. They're really, they work out well, you know, we're incented even more, um, to, you know, work on marketing and, you know, spread the word about them. And they appreciate that even more. And we sh- all share in the upside of that. So when it's right, it's really, really good. Yep. It, unfortunately, you know, and I don't know, you know, in Austin, in Nashville, in the music towns, 
is it better than that because there's or is it worse than that because there's you know so many musicians you you lived in austin for a while yeah you know was it was it a more music centric booking venue oh yeah clubs were way more music musician and and band friendly than they are here not not to say that there aren't some here that are musician and band friendly but uh there's a lot here where it's like you describe you know your your scene is almost intrusive by the staff on duty at the time that you get there obviously somebody wanted to have a band there but you know it's not you know they don't have everybody's buy-in it's not part of what everyone sees as the value whereas in austin I don't think I ever played anywhere that wasn't happy to have a band and wasn't organized to have a band. Uh, There were some jerks, I guess, down there, but, but far and few between because there's a, there's enough places to play that you're like, well, I don't want to play there anymore because that guy's a jerk. Then, so they wouldn't last. Um, It was very, very rare. Uh, Or only the guys that really need a gig that bad. will put up with that. Right. Yeah. Even then though, man, like in Austin, there's a lot of places to play. At least least there were whatever, 20, you know, 20 years ago when we were, uh, when I was playing down there, but yeah, I imagine it it hasn't changed. There's everybody has bands. It's just, it's it's a thing. Well, they call the town, the live music capital of the world, right? Uh, Whether or not it actually is, you know, something you can debate for hours, but when you get off the plane, that's what it says right there. So yeah. everybody sort of buys into that. Um, and, and so people are proud to have bands and, and all of that. Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. All right. We're we going on to number three. Now you want to take number, number three, three first or am I doing number yeah. three first? Okay. I will say number three. Um, I got to give thanks to my musical bandmates of all the projects that I have. So I, uh, I've learned over the years to weed out the people that are not fun to play music with. Right. So I, I've fired a couple people from the house rockers cause it just wasn't right. And I know people can walk into any gig. Their job is to play the notes, you know, do a good job, smile, They're very pleasant. And some people that's, that's uh, their, as you know, many pros, like the deal is me walking in. I will do what you asked me to do. I'll do it with a good attitude. I'll do it professionally. And that's the end of our, of our relationship. I mean, if, if we happen to make a personal connection, that's cool, but uh, you know, that's not expected. It's, it, a lot of it is very transient connections. I have, you know, my projects, I'm pretty in deep with the people that I play music with. So, you know, the house rockers, again, long, long time. Those guys are my buddies. Yep. Sometimes we fight like brothers, but, uh, you know, this week in particular, I'm kind of thinking about even, even the fights that I have, we're all still there and we're all still rooting for each other. And there's no fights right now. And kind of in hindsight, it's like, what did we ever fight about anyway? You know, yeah. what, what does it matter? We, you know, we have something really extraordinary here. They're all really good players. They're, um, they're generous musicians. You know what I mean when I say a generous musician? Yeah. Everybody's here to help each other out and stand each other and prop yeah. each other up. Yeah. Yeah. But, but also like, you know, like me and Simon, there's no insistence on who takes a solo. There's right. always like, in, in, you know, appreciating someone else's musical talent, wanting someone else to do well. I'm um, not, you know, I think a generous musician is the opposite of the musician who it's all about me, 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 me. Right, for sure. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I am feel very fortunate. I play both in the house rockers and acoustic madness, very, very generous musicians. You know, if, if there's a part of a song that needs fixing, we fix it together in, yep. a, in a really constructive way. And so that's pretty cool. So I can't imagine a life in, in a band, people that you see over and over again, you rehearse weekly, you gig many times, you know, you're with them, you know, a lot, 60, 70, 80, a hundred times a year, one every three days, if it's a hundred times a year, I mean, come on, that's a lot of time. And, uh, and this is also, you know, a, a very emotional outlet for people. How do you do it with people who are just passing acquaintances or that you just put up with because they have a good skill or they're the only bass player in town or that type of thing. Right. Yeah. So I, I just, wouldn't, I wouldn't right want that. Right yeah. Right. Yeah. So right here, right now I've got great bandmates. They're great people. You know, they're, they're interesting. They're thoughtful. They add to the quality of my life in so many ways, but specifically with regards to my musical pursuits, they're just always there for me. And, you know, some of them go back so many years. It's just really when you take stock and when you're in a bit of a funk, like I am, when you take stock as to the blessings that you have around you, good people who help bring your musical ideas to life, um, who you go through the wars with good venues, bad venues. Yep. It's really a pretty remarkable thing to be able to have those kind of relationships. I couldn't agree more. And, and that's my number three as well is uh, thanks to all the musicians I play with, you know, and, 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 I have a lot of different projects that I work with and that I have worked with this year. 
Fling, of course, you know, kind of my main band, if if uh, if you want to call it that. And certainly it, it is that, uh, you know, the comfort and ease at which we work together is stellar. And, yeah. uh, you know, and it's worth exactly, so much. It, yeah, it's worth so much. And, you know, I think we all uh, for individual reasons sort of lost sight of that this year up until very recently. Uh, you know, our schedule got a little screwed up because we were working around our keyboard player's schedule in terms of when he could rehearse and things like that. And so we got out of a regular routine, which over the last month, we just sort of, you know, decided, well, this is stupid. Let's just get back into a regular routine. And so we, now we have. And uh, and I think we've all really come to appreciate it. I certainly I know I have. And it feels like everybody else has, too, uh, that it's like, oh, yeah, wait a minute. Like this is it's not just that this is a comfort thing, although it is comfortable. It's like it can be fresh and we're doing some different stuff together. But it's that that uh, familiarity and trust that, that we all have trust. is is wonderful. Yeah. And uh, and but then moving on from that, you know, that's not to take anything away from the other stuff that I do that I really enjoy. Madhouse has been stellar for me this year. It The blend of like theater and rock and performance are all together. I mean, it started with bitter pill last year. Um, it was sort of the beginning of that. And that's, that's the foundation of where Madhouse has, has, has come from. And it's been great. I mean, it's really something I enjoy that we've actually got a gig this weekend that I have to miss because I got something going on with the family. And, uh, so they've I, actually, we're still, I think we're still trying to find a sub for me, but I thought they had one, but anyway, um, you know, it's, it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to miss that. It, you know, it's not just like, oh, I'm just subbing the gig out. It's like, oh, I'm subbing yeah. out a gig with my band. It's a, you know, it does feel like m my band, right. And it's, or everybody's band. Um, Uptown Celebration has been, uh, was a great thing for me to find this year. I just hope it, uh, it goes on further with Gary having opened his restaurant. He doesn't have the time to do what he used to do for this band and, and every band, needs that person that is the glue and uh and if he can't put in the time i'm not convinced this band's going to continue but mm. the gigs that we've had have been fantastic and and even if it ends here which it all together may already be over um although everybody's saying yeah if gigs come up you know man we're all in um it, it still was you know like a worthwhile run and worth the time that i invested into it and all of that that's uh, cool yep and then my acoustic gigs with Monkey Fist and Amanda, uh, but also like stellar. I really appreciate doing those acoustic gigs. It's it's a very different thing from playing totally. electric. I if I only did acoustic gigs and I've done stretches where I only do them, I really start to miss the electric thing. But but you know it, the, the the reverse is true because you can hear in a very different way. I I'm usually standing for those acoustic gigs, so it's really a totally different perspective for me. In, in a lot of different ways. And so I, I'm really appreciative of that. And I've got actually a gig with Amanda and Jamie, the bass player that uh, actually that plays with us at Madhouse. On, well, those on things Wednesday tap night. into your, so, yeah. they tap into your um, ability to emote music and they tap into your, into your ability to connect via music with people listening to music, right? It's a yeah. very different thing than hiding behind a drum set, yeah. hiding behind a band, you yeah. know, it's a, it's a very different thing. Yeah. That wash of noise on the stage when you're playing in a band is, is sort of a, you know, a veil that you can hide behind at times. Uh, yeah. 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 You can create a wall of noise that uh, kind of uh, veil is a good word for it, you know, yeah. Yeah. but um, in those kind of intimate things, uh, I just picked up a, a coffee shop gig in my town and I'm actually really looking forward to it. It's going to be really small and really intimate, but the vibe of the coffee shop, it's, 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 it's later at night uh, than the coffee shop has typically been open. People like they come to listen to the music. So they get a cup of coffee, they're facing the musician. They're generally quiet, and respectful. Right. Yep. And, uh, and it's, and it's actually a conversation between a performer and an audience, which is, I think more and more, you know, one of the, one of my past fail things about a gig for me is like, but being background music is really, I'm, I can't do that. Like, like I know musicians great who it's a gig and if they just want me to be background music, you know, fine. Sure. But I, like, especially with my acoustic stuff, I do like some pretty soft finger picking stuff and you know, that type of thing. And it's just very distracting to me, the clang of plates, clank of plates and you know, people who are just kind of talking over the music constantly. 
with acoustic madness. And again, I attribute this to Mary Ellen because she's just so damn good. She just stops rooms and makes makes you listen to her because her voice is so yeah. incredible. I mean, she just we've turned two places, uh, restaurants. One is one is the bar area of a restaurant and the other is a restaurant we've turned them into music rooms. Like people come, they sing along, they're paying attention to us. The other performers who go there, it's not necessarily that way that your background music, but, um, you know, to me, the wineries are generally pretty good gigs. There's some that are a little noisy and you're, it's not about you, sure. but the ones, you know, and then it's also on me to kind of like, you know, make that happen. Like again, Mary Ellen does that just by opening her mouth. Uh, it's, it's a just, yeah. it's remarkable. I've seen it over and over and over again. She's just so good. But, um, you know, for me, it, you know, sometimes when I hit the right song and the right moment and the right expression, all of a sudden I've got them. Yeah. And then that's a pretty rewarding, that's a pretty rewarding thing. Yeah. And, but it, you know, you said it's a conversation between you and the crowd. I, I think that is more, uh, that is, that is more naked. Uh, in in an acoustic thing, it's more apparent yeah. in an acoustic thing. But I think that's just as relevant in uh, with an electric, you know, full band thing. I think you still need to have that exchange Absolutely. of energy happening all, all night long, right? It's it's different, but it's but, just stripped down. But it's just stripped down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, right, number four. Number four. Well, let's see. You know, I have so many on my list. It was hard to, to limit this to five. Well, good for you. Good I for know. You. Uh, but I am going to, I'm going to, for number four, it's um, uh, thanks to my, really, I'm going to, I'm going to include my bandmates in this list, but it's going to start with thanks to my family and my wife, my kids for being tolerant of all the music that I play that brings me out of the house. They're not only are they very supportive of the fact that I play, but they are supportive of the things that I play in. Like they often will come out to see me play in, in That's cool. you know, in, in a variety of things. Um, and, and that actually helps, you know, sort of guide me into the kinds of things to do. If I can play something, if I can play a gig that I know my family's going to enjoy coming out to see, that makes it easier for me to go and do that gig. Cause we're not, I mean, we're apart, but we're not apart and they're enjoying it too. They've got a night out and that kind of thing. So, um, so I'm very thankful for that, but I'm I, equally, I am thankful to all of my bandmates for putting up with the fact that uh, there are times when I turn down rehearsals and gigs because I have events with my family. Uh, you know, it's, it's, there are these two things in my life that I really, really value and enjoy uh, spending time with. And, and it's a balance for me and I appreciate everybody around me that sort of has to deal with that balance. So, yeah. That's, yeah. That's so, it. so I, what I'm hearing you saying is what you're thankful for is the ability to, um, to prioritize your family in your endeavors. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. We both have pretty incredible lives. I mean, your wife, married a working musician and she knew what she was getting into and she's incredible. Yep. My wife did not. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and so I kind of threw a curveball to her, you know, midway through and she, you know, I, I remember this episode that we did, you know, we were raising kind of like pre-teenage girls when I started playing music and, yeah. uh, it was not the most opportune time <laughs> and I did the best I could. Undoubtedly I fell short often and my wife has been awesome. And, and now, you know, it's, it's part of our life. I mean, you know, a lot of our friends are, our couple friends are from our musical community yeah. and that's a really cool thing. And, you know, she's really loved and, you know, well-regarded. I mean, she's well-regarded as someone who puts up with a guy who, who, you know, gigs so much, you know, she gets asked all the time, how do you do that? Yeah. And, uh, and, and, uh, you know, she's so just so gracious and graceful and supportive. So I agree with you. Like you, you can't do what you do. You can't come to a Thanksgiving holiday and not take a moment and be, and be thankful for your core unit who, you know, you can't do it without their support. You just can't. You can't. No, no, no. And, and I, I think I certainly, I'm sure you too know musicians that have failed at that balance and wind up without a, price. a family and you pay yeah. the price. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or without a band that are very bitter about it. That's correct. It's one of the, that, Oh that, yeah. That, and more commonly that, that would be what I've experienced is guys who just quit playing music because mm -hmm. just caused too much strife in their, in their, in their life, which is a sad thing. So it is. Uh, yeah, it is. I would say my number four is, um, I have to give thanks for my musical heroes because, uh, it is still as fresh as when you're, you know, 12 years old 
and you put on headphones and you kind of go to a different place. It still is fresh for me when I hear songs, expressions, lyrics, guitar solos that that take me someplace and just you like I got to go pick up my guitar and try and do that. You know, that that type of feeling. And, you know, I, I have to say I have I have lifelong musical heroes and I have newly acquired musical heroes. And every time something like that happens, that vibrancy you feel when you're inspired, when you're me, when you're when you pause to think, you know, and kind of take in a meaning of something. Uh, but mostly, you know, music for me, when something inspires me, I got to pick up a guitar and figure out how to get that feeling onto a stage sometime soon. Yep. Uh, you know, that that is still one of the great rushes in my life. Oh, for sure. Oh, I, yeah. It, it, and and like you said, it can be something new. It can be something that you've known for a long time. But uh, yeah, absolutely. There's times when it's like, oh, I got to go play I, like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I got to go do that thing. And again, it, it, it's it's songs that may have been with you for your whole life. And sometimes, you know, they're not as important. You know, they don't have as important a place. And then you pick them up again. And it's like an old friend and you're reminded about that feeling. Yeah. And then sometimes it's some entirely new approach to music that's kind of cool and interesting. I mean, so or there's a new take on old music. So just uh, my when my guitar heroes, my when my music heroes. When I feel that spark of inspiration, that 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 just rush yep. of adrenaline of feeling something creatively, you know, bubbling. I think, I think it's something that's an amazing thing in life to feel. And so I'm very grateful for those moments that happen. Yeah. It, it, I always um, wonder how non-musicians, I mean, there's, there, like you said, there's that feeling it's, and it's indescribable uh, other than saying that it's intense and, and uh, a driving thing, but I always wonder how non-musicians, how that resonates yeah, because I see music resonate well, you know with that people, though, right? right? Yeah. That's the thing is you go to a live show and you yeah. see someone get out of their seat or you see how important it is for someone to feel that thing. Yeah. So for me, just what I do when I feel that thing is usually I go rush to recreate that thing, but someone else just wants to, you know, fans, music fans, Yeah. you know, it, it's just truly amazing. The transference of, it's, of, uh, yeah, the interactivity is the, the desire for interactivity in some way with it is is something I think that's at the core of most humans, right? It's it's just the magical part of the cosmos for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Cool. I like it. All right. Yeah. Number five. Uh, you number five. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wind up doing more than five because uh, I got two very specific things that I wanted I want to mention here, and one of them is uh. The drum center of Portsmouth. It's not in Portsmouth anymore. They moved this year, but you spoke about this place many times having a, I mean, now that it's massive, they, they bought this big barn that they're in. And I think they've got, you know, 20,000 square feet or something more, maybe more than that. Uh, having a drum only focused music store to be able to go to is really quite special. Um, I never really had one of those, uh, growing up, there was a music store called Norwalk Music in the town that I lived in called Norwalk, Connecticut. Uh, thankfully, the owner and then his son, who was about my age, uh, who took over the store for a while, were both drummers. So they had a very competent and well-stocked drum department there. But they were just a general music store. But again, they you know the drum department was pretty well cared for and, and, and curated. Um it, that's it's not always that way. There, there's not always a drum focused store near where you live uh, in Austin. Right. I was lucky. I had Tommy's drum shop, which was fantastic. Again, it, you know, it was kind of like this drum center or Portsmouth place. Although I think DCP is larger now than Tommy's was, but, uh, but you know, just being able, it, this is a place that people from all over the country or mail order from and being able to go in there and just try out, you know, one of probably 500 different symbols or one yeah. of a thousand different snare drums. Like I went in there to buy a snare drum once and he told me, he's like, well, look, you can, you can spend as much time in here as you want. Obviously, you know, he's like, that's what we're here for. But he said, I think your time is better spent by going home and listening to all these drums on our website, then come back, pick the five that you want and you can play them in here. He's like, but otherwise you're going to drive yourself crazy pulling every drum off the thing and setting it up and, you know, playing it or whatever. 
I'm like, oh, that's it's amazing. So <laughs> yeah, having having that place so close by uh, is stellar. And and Shane Kinney, who uh, is the owner, he started it. He's a great guy. His staff is stellar. But uh, but really, it I I it is not lost on me how fortunate I am to have a place like that. And musicians, if you especially drummers, if you live in an area where you don't have one of these, think about the business opportunity there because drummers will flock to a place like this, and it will become their their home away from home. So there you go. Yeah, that's really cool. So my equivalent to that would be. Two minutes from my house is a small independent guitar store, Keep Holland Guitars. Yeah. I, I, and, I think uh, we borrowed a cajon from him, right? Exactly. You know, yeah. and I, I, you know, having that kind of friendly, non big box, you know, in an emergency, I'll set your guitar up first, you know, type of thing yes. has been a really huge blessing in my life. I mean, they've taken great care of my instruments. They've called me when there's cool things I should come check out. Um, uh, they, you know, it, it, having that kind of relationship with a, a local music store is really an essential thing for a working musician. I that, mean, it's the key being able to walk in and have them say, Oh, Hey Dave, you know, you know, like that. I mean, there's a reason they know me. I go in there and I buy things, right? I mean, it's a very straightforward thing, but like you said, the turnover isn't crazy there or anything like that. It's it, you know, it's a family. Um, and it, it makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Got it. So my uh, fifth one, I'll let you go extra, but my fifth one is uh, I'm thankful for the music fans in this area. So this is a complicated thing for me to share because <clears throat> one of the reasons I'm in a funk right now is about is about music fans. I have a complicated relationship with music fans. You know, I l sincerely appreciate people who come to hear me play music. Sincerely appreciate. Sure. I, I, I yeah, of course. Well, without them, there's no live music, without a doubt. What, but what, was also, it, what was it that Keith Urban said at the AMAs last night? He 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 got he won like three awards, actually. And he said the first thing he said, I was watching everybody. Like, how long did it take them in their list of laundry list of thank yous to thank their fans? Right. Keith Urban started right there. And he said, really, you know, thanks so much to my fans. He says, without you, it's just one long sound check. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And I, and it came, it, it rolled off the tongue so well. I know he probably says it at every single show, but he, he's right. You know, <laughs> that's what it becomes. Without a doubt. Hustle. So, so yeah. just kind of finish that thought. Um, the reason it's complicated. And again, we're mostly talking to musicians. I know we have a few music fans or consumers who listen to the show and, but they're fans enough that they, you know, my friend Scott who listens to the show says that this is like inside baseball for him. Like he really is fascinated by these conversations, but mostly we have musicians who listen. And when I say complicated, you know, uh, the types of music fans, they're the ones who really just come and you see them closing their eyes and letting the music kind of wash over them. Those are, those are the most magical people to play for. I mean, that's, that's what inspires me. There are fans who I thought were fans that don't come when I think they're going to come. There are fans who are, who are really, you know, like I think we did a whole show on this, you know, they're looking for love and, you know, we just happen to be the, the party organizer, you know, or, or the conduit for, for mass, you know, drawing of people. They're all valuable. I mean, they're all, they're all, it's all wonderful that, that people come out to listen to music or whatever their for whatever their, their personal motive is. But I'm thinking right now about those people who they need live music in order to function. Yep. They need that feeling of a lyric or, a, or, or, you know, a passage or, you know, the vibe that a band gives off of a stage of, of community or, you know, communal thinking. Those people I would walk a million miles for. I mean, the reward that I get, you, you get so much more than you're able to give from those types of relationships. So I'm, I have in my mind a couple of those people again. And, you know, the way you know them is you watch them during the show. Yep. If, if they're there because it's music therapy for them, those are the most remarkable people to try and have this intimate and I think it's a fair word. Yeah. Intimate exchange of, of emotion. That's, that's that holy cycle. So Music fans, it's all about people who love music and come out for music, whatever their motivation is. But there's the tip of the iceberg of those people who are the people that need this because, you know, whatever part of the musical performance is what's resonating with them. Loud music, 
aggressive music, love songs, whatever, you know, like I said, the, the communal vibe that a band puts off stage, um, the connection between performer, um, you know, needing to hear their favorite song when they're down, you know, those, that, those people are, are make this all, I mean, it's, I would do it in my bedroom, right? So would you. Right. But of course. The chance, the chance to do it for someone where you get that feedback that you meant something to them, that you're doing something that has, that is an elevated purpose. That is the most rewarding thing. And I am unbelievably thankful to have a chance to play for people like that. Those other groups, it's an interesting thing because and that's kind of going back to where my funk is. When I, when I kind of take stock, where, where's that guy been lately? Where's that guy been? It definitely gets been in my head. I must not be doing a good enough job and, you know, get back in the woodshed, find better songs, you know, you know, work out more, you, you know, do something more. So it's just a no brainer that, Oh, I got to go hear what Paul's doing tonight. And, uh, it's definitely something I struggle with house rockers. I haven't played for a while. So I haven't kind of gotten that, that, you know, visceral jolt that I get from playing with those guys. Um, I'm just very, very thankful right here and right now. I'm thankful for the opportunity for a chance to play music. I'm thankful for an opportunity to connect with people for music. And for those who I'm not connecting with enough, I guess I have to turn into a glass half full. It's on me, man. And I have to go find ways to be better at all times and kind of, you know, make that experience something special for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it, it, I agree with you. It's tough when you've got people that are coming to see you that aren't interacting in a way that works. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's my list. What else you got? Uh, well, I have, so I, I guess I have two more and, and the first is, uh, is yet another piece of gear and it's not a piece of gear I own. It's the, either the Behringer X32 or the Midas M32 board. These have become so ubiquitous everywhere. Uh, anywhere that's got a, a board built in nowadays, theaters, big rock clubs, whatever, that's the board they have. Uh, most sound engineers that I work with, that's the board they tend to bring with them because it's relatively portable as well. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, you know, you can get into one for somewhere between 900 and 1500 bucks, depending on how many different options you want. And it's a digital board, fully digital board, and it's iPad accessible. And so an iPhone accessible and Android accessible, which means that, you know, combine that with my in-ears. It used to be if I was playing somewhere and there was house sound, there was very little chance that I'd be able to use my, my in-ears because in most of those cases, even if they would run me a feed, which they always would, it would be this far too time consuming negotiation between me and the engineer while they tweaked the mix for my ears. Uh, it just doesn't work. It, you know, it, it's too sensitive of a mix to have someone else mix it for you, unless, you know, you're a touring musician and that's their only job and they don't have to worry about front of house yeah. or, or whatever. But, you know, for a one night gig, even if you've got somebody where that's their only job, you can't have a conversation with them while you're playing. You know, it, it's an ongoing thing that they would need to learn. Mm. So uh, being able to mix my own ears is huge. And this year, especially, it seems like that board and it really, it's, I mean, it's similar from Behringer or Midas because they're, they're both the same company now. And uh, the Midas one has better preamps and a slightly, slightly different um, uh, uh, routing series, but, but it's essentially the same thing. And certainly from my standpoint, mixing just myself, it's really is the same thing. And uh, it's just stellar having that everywhere. And I know it's kind of awesome. crazy to put that on the list, but it's made a huge difference for the gigs that I've played this year. So. Well, that's great. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's I, that. it makes sense to me that my, my highly technical friend would have to at, at least bow to uh, some great technology at some point in time here. Yeah. Well, that's, and that's what it comes down to. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and my last one, and I, I, you know, this is almost cliche to throw in. And I, I think if, if we gave you an extra one to throw in, you would do the same thing is this show. I really, really appreciate oh. coming and doing this show with you every week, Paul. It's awesome. Thanks. So thank you. Yeah, it is awesome. Yeah. Well, we've done, we've done 141 of them. So, um, we're clearly not slowing down and we clearly are, have plenty to talk about and looking forward to getting into the new year and, you know, getting back to maybe some interviews and exploring some more gear and going back and talking about more song selection. So it's all been good. And I agree, Dave, just a chance to talk to my buddy 
once a week for the past almost three years is really fantastic. It's killer. Right. I mean, if that, right. We would do it. It's just like we were saying about the gigs, you know, we would do this anyway, but having you folks listen, a gives us yet another angle of interaction uh, about it because you always have your thoughts, but also it sort of forces us to do this on a schedule as opposed to, ah, this week I don't have time in, you know, uh, how about if I call you next week? And then suddenly it becomes, we're talking once every six months. Uh, so this is, yeah, it, it really, it, the conversation means a lot to me. The, all of you that listen mean uh, so much. It's really great. So thank you to everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool stuff. All right, Dave, I'm wishing all the Hamiltons a very happy Thanksgiving. I'm wishing all our listeners an extraordinary Thanksgiving. Um, May be filled with music and family and and uh, and things to be thankful for. Things to be thankful for. Thanks, Paul. Thanks to every, all of our listeners. Thanks to you and your family, man. This is great. Take care, bud. Take it easy, folks. We'll see you next week. Always be performing. Always, even on Thanksgiving. Just don't, you know, dance on the turkey. Unless that's your thing. <laughs> 